During this tutorial, we're going to cover some very basic concepts of animation in Clara.io. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started with a, a basic animation in Clara. So we can either click New Scene, or we can go over here and click uh, Create New Scene under Getting Started. We're going to click Create Empty Scene in this case and go ahead and select gallery. Click create. And we have a new document set up for us. So we're gonna stay in, in general mode for this. Um, we're gonna work with this area over here called the explorer panel. We're gonna work with the creation panel up here. And we're also gonna work with the, the properties panel over here to, uh, to animate. Um, there's also a drop down that you should be aware of down here. There's a little arrow at the bottom of your viewport. And when I click that, that opens up the ability to add script, a log of what you do, a material library, and a model library. Uh, for our project, we're actually going to use the material library, both these HDR, high definition um, resolution environments, and these materials as well. So be aware of, of those and, and where those are. So let's go ahead and get started with a basic animation here. Um, so we need some assets to drop down from our creation panel. The first thing I'm going to do is click this little T up here, this text tool. And that's going to drop text down into my viewport. Notice that um, there are some handles attached to the text so I can move that around in space. And depending on the... Uh, the device you're working with now, we can go ahead and navigate that. I'm just going to move that um, to more of a, a frontal view and scroll out a little bit, zoom out a little bit. Okay, so with text selected over here in my Explorer panel, um, I'm going to go over here to the Properties panel on the right-hand side here and make some adjustments to that, um, that primitive that says Text. So to change the text, we're going to go right down here to where it says text, and I'm going to highlight that in this little blue box, and I'm going to type in a word. So I'll type in my last name. I'll hit enter on the keyboard, and notice that it turned the uh, text into the text that I just typed. Um, we can change the, the, font, um, the font size by bumping it up or down or highlighting this and, and typing in a, a number and hitting enter. Let me go back to one. We can make it uh, bold or uh, italicize it, so on and so forth. So there are some, some adjustments that you can make to the, the text, but I'm just going to stay very uh, general with this, and, and we'll just leave the text as is. Um, there's a, a drop-down for, for shape as well, so we can actually change the, the shape of the, the polys. So let's go back and um, grab a, another asset up here. I'm going to grab a box up here from the creation panel, and I'm going to drop it down too. So we're going to take these two entities and let's make those interact and just really quickly talk about a, a basic um, animation concept. So again, over here in the Explorer panel, anything that I want to actually work with, I have to go over and select this stuff, um, clicking on what I, what I want to move in space or adjust with... Uh, with materials. So while we're talking about materials, I'm going to go ahead and throw some on uh, the, the text and the box here. So let me go ahead and scroll down through this and I'll use a, a cool color and warm cl color down here. So I use um, red for the box. With the box selected, I click this red um, ceramic coated material and notice that it applied uh, the material directly to my box when I clicked it. So I'm going to go ahead and select the text now. I'll click the blue material and it will apply it as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and collapse the material library. By the way, when you start to add a bunch of assets to your scene, um, it's, it's probably proper for you to, uh, to collapse these folders so that you don't have a, a ton of things in this little stream or this hierarchy. Okay, so we have some material on our, uh, our text and our box. And I'm going to go down, I'm, rather than setting up lighting up here in the creation panel, I'm going to steal one of these HDR environments. And I'll show you guys how to see a render view of that here in just a, a couple of minutes. So as I, as I scroll down through these, um, any one of these that you hover over that little magnifying glass, it's going to show you what that environment looks like. So let me, uh, let me just pick one that's, that's well lit. Let's do this... Um, dark spot studio so I'm going to click on it 
and I'm going to have it applied to the scene. Notice that it's, it says it's loaded, but I don't get to see a preview of it quite yet. I'll, I'll get to that point. We'll take a look at that in the, the visualizer here in a little while. Um, let's go ahead and talk about animating on a very, very simple level here. We're down here is our timeline, and basically what the timeline is, is it's, it's a collection of frames. Um, by default, there are 200 frames in here, and I'm moving the scrubber back and forth, and that's basically saying, okay, this is where this scene is during this time. So at frame 80, if I have an animation set up, that's what you would see up here in your uh, your viewport. I'm going to go ahead and go back to uh, to frame zero, and let's start to uh, to move some stuff in space. In your viewport, in the upper right hand corner, by the way, uh, are two little arrows facing each other. If I click that, I can go into a kind of a, a split screen, so I can see a top view, a front view, and a couple of perspective views as well. Um, you can independently zoom in and out of those. And they come in handy when you're trying to basically arrange things in space. So my cube right now in the perspective view, I can see that cube's kind of sunken down into my, uh, my floor plane. And if I select that box over here in the Explorer panel, um, I can go ahead and move it up in one of these, uh, these planes. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it up and notice that the bottom of the box is level now with a floor plane. I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, I'll leave uh, the, the Berkey text elevated as well. So just be aware of that if you're starting to, to have problems navigating. Um, this is a good way to do it. I'm going to go back and I'm going to select this, uh, this perspective view that we started with by clicking those two little arrows and I'm ready to start uh, setting up this animation. Now Let's go through some just basic concepts, and I'll try not to fumble through them too bad, uh, but they're, they're going to be pretty straightforward. Let's say that the first thing I want to do is move this box in space. I want to start it back here, and I want it to end up in the, the foreground. So wherever I want to start it at frame, frame zero, I can go up here to my properties panel, and let me collapse this, and I can go down to transform, and I'm going to work with this transform dropdown. Now, this shows this little, uh, these little icons here, the X, Y, and Z axis, shows where that uh, box is in space right now at frame zero. And if I want to start animating, I can click that um, word translation, and I can drop a keyframe. Notice that a yellow keyframe showed up here at frame zero. So we're saying that this box at frame zero is right here in space. I'm going to move my scrubber forward. To close to the end of the animation, let's go to whatever frame this is, frame 190. And now I'm going to move the box in front of the word Berkey. And I'm going to say this is going to end, or this animation um, motion is going to end at frame 190. I'll go back and I'll click translation again. That will drop another keyframe down. And now when I go and hit play, I start at frame 0 and the box moves forward to frame 190 and that's where it stops and holds. Um, so that is the basics of animation. That's totally linear. We haven't rotated anything, by the way. I would encourage you to, uh, to explore rotation, um, perhaps scale and shear as well, um, by dropping down keyframes, um, by making adjustments to those, uh, those entities. Let's say that I want to rotate the, the box. Um, I can bump the rotation up or down and hit rotation and that will drop a keyframe wherever the scrubber is to start that motion and then if I, I want to end or change the rotation I can just change it click rotation again and that will drop another keyframe and it will it will hold that animation and again you'll get good at this by working with it and doing it for a while so uh, I would encourage you to uh, to uh, to play um, I'm holding command on my, uh, my keyboard and kind of uh, orbiting around here, by the way. Um, so navigation, we, we can zoom in and out using our, our scroll ball too. Um, so we'll cover navigation and, and other tutorials, but those are the, the basics. Okay, so now in space I have this cube moving and it's going cutting through Berkey. But we don't have to, to stop with that scene. Let's go ahead and just add a, another um, aspect of, of animation to this. We're going to go over here and click 
text and I'm going to have uh, this uh, this text Berkey move up so that perhaps it, it clears um, this cube that's moving at it. So I'm going to take my scrubber and I'm going to move it to right about where it would hit that text. And notice that the keyframes went away because those are actually attached to this, this box object. So anytime you uh, click on a new object, it's going to have its own set of keyframes. So I'm going to say that right here um, at frame, what is it, 102, it's right here in space. I'm going to click translation. So I'll drop a keyframe and I'm going to scrub forward a little bit. And I'm going to move this thing up. Click translation again. And notice that it, it dropped another keyframe down at that, that point. So now I have Berkey. Um, actually, I started up. And I can, I can move this keyframe. Let me see. I'm going to start it down here. And I'm going to move that second keyframe as well. And now they're colliding, so I got it reversed. So all I have to do is move this keyframe out to where I want it to end. And I'm going to go ahead and drop a new keyframe down where I want it to start. By the way, over here in my Explorer panel, um, I can right click and um, I can select animation and clear all keys. But notice when I did that, it kept the keyframes for the box, so that animation is, is still intact. But let's go back and let me get this, uh, this squared away. So I have this box coming toward Berkey. I'm going to click Translation. I'm going to scrub forward a little bit. And let me move this back down. And I click translation again. All right, now we've got it squared away. So it's up high. Here comes the box. It cleared it. And it looks like I timed it up. It's close to having it timed up. Let me move that up just a tad bit more. Hit play. And it clears the text. Okay, so those are just some basic concepts um, with animation, but let's go ahead and take a look at this scene as if it were rendered. Okay, so before we do that, go ahead and click where it says Untitled Scene. I'm, I'm going to give this, uh, this scene a name. Scene Example. Click Save. And let's take a look at this in the Visualizer. So if I click Clara... I go back to my uh, my home page, and here is the scene that I just designed, scene EX. I'm going to go ahead and click this little uh, this little box up here in the upper left hand corner, and this gives me available action. So I can do a lot of things with this. I can download it as a, a different type of a file to use in another application. Um, I could delete it if I want to get rid of it, clone it, rename it, so on and so forth. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and go to uh, to view. I'm going to click view. And here's a, a view of my scene rendered, and I can hit play and see what this thing's going to look like as if it were a, a finished product. Let me, uh, let me center it up a little bit better. Um, there are navigation tools here as well, so you can, uh, you can rotate it or change its, its view any way you want. Um, you could take a screen recording of this if you wanted to, to keep it in animation, or in, in this case, I can uh, go ahead and do a snapshot of it and open that scene up and, and see what it looks like as a still if I wanted to use it. Um, I can also go up to download here through view. And I can download it. Let's say that I want to 3D print this thing. I can download it as an OBJ or an STL. Um, and I can also share it. So I'm going to actually go ahead and show you how to do that. I'm going to click share. And you can invite people using either an email or in this case, say I want to share it with myself. I can click share and save. And 
done. And then I'll go ahead and go back to uh, to my documents. And again, this is uh, this is where it's housed. So hopefully that gives you a, a a good quick overview of at least how to get things moving in space and Clara and a couple of different aspects of of setting up a scene.